All right. We are so excited today. There is a progressive movement happening among millennial entrepreneurs where they are part of a supportive community driven to make a large positive impact on the world. This is where they gain intimate access to high level mentors where in business themselves. And because of the collaborative community, businesses accelerate and scale faster, sooner, and at less expense than if they were to do it alone. I am your host, Anastasia Button, and this is Entrennial Talks, the value-driven broadcast platform of Entrennial University. It's a worldwide and exclusive mentor-based business accelerator community for startups that is 100% mobile and 100% global. And today I am so excited to introduce our amazing guest. You've been hearing all about her in the emails on social media. It's been awesome. Today we have one of the coolest people I know and I'm really excited to introduce to all of you. Felicia Jones is the budgetologist. She is going to talk to us about what she does best which is business finances and specifically budgeting so that you, the entrepreneurs, don't have to run out of money, but I can actually make it. Thank you so much for being here, Felicia. Hey, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing awesome. This is so fun. I'm so excited to have you here. And uh, please tell us a little bit more about you so the audience can hear maybe like some places where they can find you, websites, things like that. Oh, all right, cool. So I'm a budgetologist and I literally, I travel the world working with business owners talking about money and budgeting. Um, and my biggest goal is just to have a lot of fun while talking about budgeting, which sounds really crazy. Um, <laughs> so if you want to find out more about me, you could definitely go over to keepupwithmrsjones.com. I also do a live stream every morning at 7.45 a.m. Mountain Time. And if you have no idea where Mountain Time is, just Google it. Um, people in Mountain Time have no idea where it is either. So, um, but I answer any questions about business budgeting and solo entrepreneurship. Um, and I give tons of unsolicited money advice. So that's what I do in a nutshell is I just talk about money a lot. <laughs> yeah, you do. I mean, I tap into your Instagram feed. You do a lot of stories on there and live feed. Um, so guys, check her out on Instagram. Uh, keeping up with Mrs. Jo Mr. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, <laughs> Mrs. Jones. There we go. <laughs> so I'm so excited that we have you today because, you know, finances probably is one of the most not wanted to talk about topics, right? So like for me, I know I was in a place where I was like, I don't want to talk about my finances, but I will Google search the crap out of it, right? <laughs> so you are the expert in this stuff. And so people have a hard time maybe approaching you, but they'll Google you all day long. So <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about what is that barrier and that, that fear that maybe we're happening and how we can kind of feel a little bit more comfortable just to begin to talk about finances? You know, that's a really good question because talking about money, oh my gosh, it's like, I don't know, it might be right up there with public speaking. People just try to avoid it at all costs. But one of the tricky things about it is that when you start a business, you can't really avoid it that much, you know, mm -hmm. because money is one of the biggest things that will ruin a business um, and ruin a business and third, ruin a business. So you kind of have to learn about it as you go. But one, one, one thing I've noticed with working with people is that all of the money mindset challenges and issues kind of come from how we grew up, you know, how we saw money, how our parents interacted with money, how we were taught about money or how we weren't taught about money. And unfortunately we bring all of that into our adult lives and we don't want to be embarrassed. That's the other thing. We don't want to be embarrassed and ask for help. Um, I did the same thing. You know, I, I was making a lot of money coming out of um, college and then my first job, but I had a math degree, engineering degree, computer science degree, but I was too scared to go ask someone to um, get help adding. So it really is a little bit of fear. Um, we, won't, we don't want to be judged, but um, one of the unfortunate things is that we're going to have to deal with it at some point, especially if we're business owners. Mm, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole reason. Well, not the whole reason, but it's one of the biggest reasons why we're in business is to make money. And mm -hmm. we got to know where the money's going in order to make sure that we're making money and it's going to yes. the account. I remember going to uh, some seminar. I think it was, um, 
it doesn't matter. But I went to a seminar and they talked about different people. And we have the savers. They're very focused on saving money. We have the spenders. They're very focused on, you know, spending money. <laughs> and then we have, uh, you know, the monks that think that everybody should have all the money. And then there's people like myself included at that time where I was the ostrich, where I was just like head in the sand. We don't know what's in the bank account. We're not even thinking about budgeting, you know, all of that jazz. So when it comes to those who are in, in those areas, you know, they're either the spender, the, the saver, the monk, or the ostrich, what are some tips you have to help them get more into a place of balance? You know what? That's, that's so cool. I like, I like the animals <laughs> because as a business owner, you kind of have to go through all of those different phases because we start off wanting to DIY and we're going to be a monk and, you know, like, oh no, we're not going to spend anything. And then we get into business and we realize we have to spend a little bit of money to make some money. And then we instantly put our head in the sand and, and we're just like, okay, money doesn't exist here. And then we really do have to get into those other phases where we have to balance everything. So, I mean, some of the things that I like to tell, um, the biggest thing I like to tell anyone is pay attention. That's hands down. One of the things that you can do right now is actually acknowledge that money exists in your business <laughs> and, and then just start paying attention to it. Like sit down and actually look at it. Um, I, I always say, and we'll talk about this a little later, um, just to look at it twice a month. You don't have to go to save the world. And I think that's what a lot of us try to do. We try to save the world when it comes to money. Whereas sometimes if you pay attention, it'll help you start to balance. And so that you can make really good decisions of when you do need to be a monk and when you do need to go be a spender, when you do need to be a saver. And um, we never want to put our head in the sand. So that's the first one. We never, ever want to be an ostrich. Um, it won't get us very far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, you really do just have to pay attention and kind of just start acknowledging that money is a part of business, it's a part of life. I mean, you need it to pay rent. I, I know you have animals just like I do. And they look at you, you know, they did not give up their expensive kibble just so that you could start a business. So you really have to just pay attention and take care of them. You know, I can tell, I don't have kids if you can tell by now. Um, <laughs> yeah, you and I both, we, we got fur babies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they want to eat, you know, so we just got to get real with the money and, and stop pretending that it doesn't exist, but, and just realize that you're going to have to balance all of those different pieces and parts as a business owner. So what would your suggestion be or tips that you would have for us today that we could walk away with being able to balance better with budgets? <laughs> you know, um, so I talk a lot about um, budgeting and I know that this word kind of makes people like tense up a lot. And um, one of my biggest things is to let you know that a budget does not restrict you. It doesn't force you not to do anything because we've gotten into this place where budgeting means restriction. Actually, budget is your freedom to have a really good business and to make um, really good decisions. So I always talk about there's two sides of the budget. We have to manage um, the, we have to manage the budget and that's the money that's coming in. We also have to feed the budget. And that means we actually need to go out and make some money because any healthy budget uh, requires, requires everyone <laughs> a healthy source of income and revenue. So when you think of budgeting, actually think of both, both sides of it, managing it and feeding it. And what I tell all of my clients, um, one of the systems that I love telling people about is using the first and 15th. And that is on the first and 15th of each month, take one hour, just like one hour between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. and really look at the overall financial picture of your business. And, and, and that's it, you know. Um, and, I, and for those of you who don't have a business yet, look at your overall financial picture for your personal life. And I always say to do one hour because we get so overwhelmed so quickly and, you know, you just need to like create this system in just one hour and, and do it in the morning because a lot of us, we try to do math at nighttime. It's very, very, yeah, forget it. very bad. Either we're hungry, we're tipsy, or we're just cranky. Um, <laughs> so you do it in the morning. And um, I had a young lady, I had a speaking engagement a couple of weeks ago and a young lady came up to me. She said, I actually like that you said, do, do my money in the morning because she would do her money at nighttime and then she would go to bed stressed out because she couldn't do anything about it versus the morning time and after nine o'clock, you know what? I can actually go do something about it if I need to mm. instead of sleeping on it. Sleeping on, on money, ugh, bad, 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 bad. 
Yeah, especially if you're having a bad day. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's like that. You don't want to have a bad day and then end it with looking at your finances and then being frustrated. Absolutely. Not good. <laughs> totally. So it sounds like a lot of what I'm hearing is kind of that that term uh, or phrase you could say of working smarter instead of working mm -hmm. harder, right? Yes. So what would you say is a scenario where someone's working harder with budget versus someone who's working smarter with budget? Because maybe some of our audience members, um, I know that I was in this place once upon a time, don't understand the difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a really good question. Let me, let me ponder that. Hmm. So working, I'll, I'll start with the working smarter. I think the working smarter is more of one acknowledging and then creating a system to really look at, you know, like the first and 15th, or if you want to do the 10th and 25th, it's just to create that system where you have to step in and be the CFO and, and try to start using those words. You are the CFO of your business and you're going to have to put on your CFO shoes or your CFO hat and be the CFO for that one hour, um, twice a month. When it comes to working harder, it's kind of like, um, when you're always looking at the, at your bank account, trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I know all of us have done it. You know, you look at like, how much money do I have? Oh, I got $3,000 sitting in the bank. So now I can go spend $3,000. And that's where you start working harder because you'll go spend the 3,000, not realizing that you have, you've just paid like two other bills um, for your business and you didn't, and you forgot about it. Or the other thing that we do, we, um, we go from, I go, I call it client to client where it's called, I call it the virtual math of budgeting, which I don't like, um, but we do it. I get it. No judgment, no shame. I get it. It's the, well, this client is about to give me $3,000. So I have 3000 to spend when we don't realize that it's not a clean 3000. We forget about all the fees and the credit card processing fees. And then, you know, that 3000 may actually only be like 2,500. So that's when we are working harder because we're just keep chasing. We keep chasing the money and we're at the point where we just don't know what's happening versus if you're smarter, you just get two steps ahead of it versus kind of like, I just don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, and this could definitely get, get you into a pinch, especially if you're, you're continually chasing, you're, you're, you're ahead of the money you're making, right? Mm -hmm. And you reach an expense that was not expected. Mm -hmm. So give us some tips of how, you know, let's say we do create some sort of balance within our budget. Um, we're working on it, we're moving forward, it's not perfect yet. Mm -hmm. But what is something that we can prepare for in, you know, in like emergency like that, where it's an unexpected expense, where it's like, <laughs> you have to front $3,000 because uh, by the way, your website is, is crashed or whatever that <laughs> looks like. Right. So um, what would be some tips for you to help us feel more certain when the uncertainty arrives? Okay. So one of the things that I, I love telling clients, so I like using different bank accounts. I love using different bank accounts to manage to manage the money. So I'm going to do this and I know it's going to be very quick. And I, for any of you who are watching, just, you know, we can reach out and I make sure it'll get an email. So Anastasia can pass it out. But I always say four bank accounts and I call it the Ross accounts. And my maiden name is Ross and I'm very lame that I um, make up um, acronyms out of my names, but uh, <laughs> I'm lame like that. I have Jones and Ross, everything. Felicia's too hard. That. I should do that. <laughs> That's a long name though. I know. I was like, okay. It's like I ran out of letters now. But, um, <laughs> But I, I like to operate out of four bank accounts in ROSS. So R is for revenue, O is for overhead, S is for salary, and S is for savings. Mm -hmm. And what we do is that all money comes into revenue and then we start allocating into these other three accounts, the overhead. That's what's going to keep the business going. And you have to know exactly how much it costs to run your business. That's another thing a lot of us don't do. And also your salary. Remember, we got puppies and kittens that need to be fed or some children if you have them. Um, but the other thing is savings. A lot of businesses, uh, business owners fail to really utilize their savings account because it's not a, a matter of if things will happen. It's a matter of when it will happen. Some of the things that um, will happen are taxes, mm -hmm. um, your website crashing, <laughs> or, you know, those months where, okay, um, I didn't get one client. So you got to start having some savings. And I always tell people um, to take 20% of anything that they've made for that month and put it into their savings account. So I don't care if it's $5, $100, or a million, take 20% of that and stick it in that savings account, it'll start giving you a cushion for, you know, when things happen. 
And we definitely want to be prepared. And this is how you stay ahead of the game versus, you know, your website does crash and somebody didn't pay you. And now you got to go beg grandma for some money. And then grandma wants her money back like in two weeks. So that's how we avoid that. <laughs> Right. And, you know, that brings up a good point, too, is that, um, well, two questions, actually, with mm -hmm. that scenario, <laughs> scenario, excuse me, is the first is when you're talking about these bank accounts and these various bank accounts, you know, we're, we're always told and taught starting out business, open up a bank account, right? <laughs> and, but you're saying variety of bank accounts. So these business bank accounts, are these personal or kind of a hybrid? They're all business bank accounts. So what I like to... Um, I always default to the fact that all of us have separated our business and our personal. I know it can be a little challenging, but I, that's where I default is that business um, has its own set of accounts and your personal have their own um, set of accounts. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have that salary account. So we go from the business over to our personal side that takes care of the salary um, or the house, whoever is managing the money at home. And for most of us um, entrepreneurs, it's probably we're managing both. So when you do have all of these business accounts, you know, you have your Ross, your revenue account, your O is your overhead, your one first S is your salary, and your second S is your savings. Um, these are all physical bank accounts um, that you open up at the bank and kind of think of it as like a, as an envelope method. And I know a lot of us may have read a Dave Ramsey book in our time, but it's the envelope method, but in business form in bank accounts. And and it kind of gets you into the practice of realizing this is how corporations, this is how businesses run their business. You know, I'm pretty certain Facebook does not have one bank account. <laughs> right. Pretty darn certain they yeah, don't have especially one Especially if bank. you're wanting to scale your business, being prepared for that scaling is yes. really important. So you can allocate all those funds, especially to your accountant eventually, which you will be having if you're managing right now. You yes. will hand that over uh, if you are going to plan on having your business scale, mm -hmm. increase sales and, uh, and business really. Right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's awesome. And then, um, Oh, what was the other question I had with that? It was the big cat thing and I forgot, but we'll get back to it. <laughs> It'll come back to you. That's It'll okay. You. <laughs> so we all have like, you know, business financial goals that we have. So kind of like that idea of the projections. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Projection. There it is. <laughs> We're there. So uh, we have these like business projections. Like I'm going to put in this effort, this amount of marketing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are the projections of sales I'm going to have. But what could we do that we can... That maybe, okay, what are we not focusing on that you're seeing that a lot of entrepreneurs need to focus on in order for those projections to become a reality? You know what? And I know we're about to load up everybody with so much information tonight. It's going to be mind blowing. I love this. That's um, why I love this show. <laughs> deep, <yo. laughs> so one of the things that a lot of us entrepreneurs don't pay attention to is something that I call the true break even number. So for all of you who are watching, I'm def I'm kind of a math nerd. My background is in computer science and systems engineering. So, you know, I have to create formulas and acronyms. That's what I do. Um, it works for you. <laughs> I know. But I call it the true break-even number. And this is something that a lot of us beginning entrepreneurs don't pay attention to, especially for my solo entrepreneurs out there. The true break-even number, three numbers, a part of this formula, is what your home needs to survive, what your business needs to survive plus savings. Mm -hmm. When you add those three numbers up, this is your base minimum of what you need to create, um, of what you need to bring in as far as sales go. Because this will keep the home going, this will keep the business going, and this will help you um, fund that savings account for when, you know, when things happen. And I think a lot of us, which is hard, and I know, you know, I'm, I'm grace and patience when you're starting off your business because we have to work to get to that point because mm -hmm. some of us are really really bootstrapping but we have to realize that our goal is to take all of this and to make money off of it and know what the true break even is for our business and so um and i'll repeat is what it costs for your home to survive what it costs for your business to survive and savings for your business and inside of that is the cost of your business this is something that a lot of business owners do not know. They don't know how much their business costs each month. And that is like crucial to anything. You really do need to pay attention and understand what it takes to keep, the, to keep your business running each month. And I love it when I go out and speak and I ask people like, how many of you know how much it costs to run your business? And I get like a lot of, 
Um, <laughs> uh, it's an idea. <laughs> like an idea. Okay, we can't budget off ideas, you know. <laughs> but um, it's also important to know how much it costs to keep the home going because we have a lot of people that are supporting us, cheering us on. Um, but when we know these costs, it helps us to not dig into personal accounts, savings account, or credit cards and go into debt. So I, I've always found that that's one of the things that a lot of us don't pay attention to um, when it comes to um, the finances, and that is understanding the true break even, you know, what it really is costing us um, to keep everything alive. And then that's what we need to go out and make each month, like, you know, to get motivated to go make that money. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's also going to give, give you a little bit more confidence knowing mm -hmm. that at least the basis is covered and we can just go mm -hmm. from there and scale up from there. Oh, so yeah. Awesome, Felicia. Thank you for that. So I know that we, let's say that we have created a budget. Um, we're in our first round of creating this budget and we're mm -hmm. exercising these things, but we're, we're putting money into places that we think is going to help us generate more sales, more publicity, whatever that looks like. But we all know that we can throw money at like say Facebook ads and then not return on anything. So let's say that we're putting money into Facebook ads, maybe Google ads, maybe uh, traveling to go speak at places, whatever mm -hmm. that looks like for us in our business. What are some tips that you have in terms of being able to measure the results of those expenses and seeing if this is an expense that we should Ooh. continue doing? or moving it into something else. Yeah, we're getting deep. Here. Ooh, this is deep. Oh, wow. <laughs> we're about to blow some minds tonight. Like, this is a lot of math. So I hope no one, <laughs> we're breaking rule number one, doing math after six o'clock. So <laughs> yeah, right. We're going to sleep on this. <laughs> I know. Everybody's going to sleep. Yeah, we should have done this in the morning. But you know what? Here, here's that thing. When you, um, when you set up the first and 15th in your business and you look at the overall picture of your money, this is the time where you go through and look at everything you have spent money on. And I know we'll talk about this. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the first and 15th and what you're supposed to do on that day. But one of the things you do is ask yourself, what did I spend my money on? And so you go down your list and see where you spent the money and you just literally, you start asking yourself, did I see a return on investment of this? And you know, when do I expect to see a return on investment? Because like you said, it is so easy to throw money at everything. And you know, and it's very hard. It's very hard when it comes to business. I, 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 I don't know, I, I, somebody quoted me a few weeks ago when I did a uh, speaking gig because somebody was like, well, what shouldn't I spend money on and what should I? And I, I have to say, I don't have the answer for you because business finance is not like personal. Um, inherently, we are running a business and it is risky. Everything we're doing is risky. Um, I do believe in trusting your gut. <laughs> it'll, it'll tell you a lot of things if you really pay attention to it, but it really is, you know, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. It's really just a risk that we're taking, but it's gonna be on you to set um, time aside each month to look at what you have been spending so that you can ask yourself, did I see a return on investment? And when you're making these decisions, you know, project out what you think your return on investment will be so that you make, um, you learn lessons from it. And then, um, and then you can go really deep and ask yourself when you're making these investments and you're looking at ROI, you're going to have to ask yourself, what part did I play in it not working very well? or working very well, and what part is that third party? So yeah, if you throw money at Facebook ads, and a lot of people do this, I'll you know put a couple hundred bucks in a Facebook ads, it didn't work. It's like, well, did you have crappy, um, <laughs> crappy <laughs> ads? Did you, did you not reach your audience? Do you not know? So we have to kind of balance, like, was it whose fault or who gets the credit for what works? So yeah. you really have to just start and this is where you have to really get into the CFO mode and start asking yourself these questions. Like, was it worth it? You know, what did I learn um, from spending all this money? Yeah. And th that's awesome. I mean, we really have to look at how are we going to measure our activities before yes. we even put the money out there and then put the money out there and then reflect on it. Like you said, on the first or the 15th, like we're going to mm -hmm. talk about in a little bit and really see, okay, what should I shift, change, do less of, do more of, because if something's working great, say in Facebook ads, but not in Google ads, probably should do more Facebook ads. <laughs> right? you know, and, and you're right. Here's another thing that we forget. We need to start measuring our time. I do like to say time is money and money is time. And we have to kind of measure our time at this same time. 
I don't know if that works, but um, the time part is so yeah. crucial to how much time um, and effort we're putting into something, um, it, you know, and actually going back to doing what you're, you're good at. Cause I know you are a speaker. There are some people who try to speak and it just, it doesn't work. And it's like, well, why do you keep putting time into it when you're better at email marketing versus me? I suck at email marketing, the speaking work. So it's just like, all right, I'll put my time and energy into that. So you do have to um, not only measure the money, but actually start measuring the time that you're putting into it. Um, one of the, um, one of my mentors, he runs a, a very large podcast. He runs podcast websites. And um, every now and then he kind of lets us in on how he's doing things. And he has a journal. He literally tracks his time every day when it comes to business. And he says it's so important for him to really track um, how much time he's putting to something to see the return, um, return on investment and also how much money has gone into something. So that's important. Absolutely. Freaking lootly. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a question from our audience. Uh, this is coming from Danielle. She asked, uh, do you have a bank that you like using for business? Um, I'm here in Colorado. So I actually use a local credit union. So it's Belco. And I like credit unions because they do offer free business checking accounts and savings accounts. Um, and then of course there are tons of other online um, banks that offer it for free. Um, I would say this, just be very, um, ask a lot of questions because there are some big banks out there that require that you have like $1,500 just to fund a business account or to fund a savings account. If mm -hmm. you're just starting out, you know, go, go to your local banks. The beautiful thing about your local banks, you can go and talk to them. <laughs> you can go in and, you know, and they won't think you're crazy when you're opening up multiple accounts and, you know, and they'll actually support you. So I actually like the local banks um, until you have to go a little bit bigger. Yeah, I know. I, I've used, I actually have used two different banks. One was in Kansas of all places. And then the other was in Colorado. But yeah. the one in Kansas, it was kind of cool. Cause when I opened my bank account with them, they were like, oh my gosh, let's showcase you on our blog. And That's like, cool. That's interesting. So I was like, why not free publicity? And yeah. I got a client out of it. So <laughs> leverage your banks. <laughs> right? you know what? The, your local banks. I mean, they're actually they actually want to see you be successful. So mm -hmm. why not? And plus when you have questions around money, it's nice to be able to actually walk in or pick up the phone and talk to somebody that, you know, that's actually supporting you. Yeah. Right. So many of our audience members are, you know, they're, they're founding businesses, they have teams, but some of them are even solo entrepreneurs, <laughs> but the majority of our audience and our intranials are actually looking for funding, venture capital, things like that. I know that you don't necessarily coach mm -hmm. around that, but what is it that we can do for our finances and our budgeting that will help us kind of have a little bit more of an extra leverage to gain that funding or that venture capital? You know what? One of the things that I would say going into a situation like that, know how to manage the money. One thing I have learned is that if I'm, you know, um, I, I do um, work with some people that are angel investors, mm. they probably want to see if you know how to manage money. Because <laughs> if I'm about to give you 30,000, 20,000 or 100,000 bucks and your money skills are a little um, shaky, mm. I'm going to be a little concerned and either one or two things easier, bring on a CFO quickly or um, make sure that you know how to speak to the money intelligently. That's one of the things. Um, and you know, I know it's kind of corny, but one of the things you can do is actually watch Shark Tank. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> because one of the things that I've noticed that they ask, well, do you give yourself a salary? And people are like, oh, I don't. And that's usually a red flag for a lot of the investors. Like, why aren't you giving yourself a salary? And where's the money going? And then, you know, just kind of not being good with the math and not knowing what's happening with the money. I would just say this, just educate yourself, be able to have an intelligent conversation. If you, if the money is just not your strong point, make sure you have somebody on your team um, that can help you. And, and remember that as the CEO of the company, I mean, it kind of is your responsibility <laughs> to know what's happening um, and don't um, get into deflection mode. Don't get into deflection mode when it comes to the money. Make sure you don't need to know all the accounting bits and pieces, but just make sure um, they know that you are on top of it. You know what's going on with the money and you know how to spend the money properly and you know how to make the money. 
that's going to be the thing. They want to know if you know how to manage it and um, make it. Yeah. I mean, I was really surprised. And I think you bring up some good, good points of watching Shark Tank. I, you know, would extend that and say, go in and watch some pitching competitions and yes. pitching opportunities. Because we, I went to an event last year I was speaking at, and part of it was these uh, startup companies where they had a point where they could pitch. And I listened to three of them and I was just like, wow, that was a deep financial question. And that founder was able to just go like, here it is, here it is, you know, and I was like, that's really freaking impressive. And then so, you know, and I know they were impressed too. It's like, you know, the answer to that. And it had to deal with like, you know, projections and PMs uh -huh. and all that jazz, right? And uh, so I thought that was really, really cool. So I think you bring up a good point is really yeah. get intimate with your numbers, right? Oh yeah, know your numbers. <laughs> They're, know your numbers. like your boyfriend, girlfriend, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and the idea of, you know, we have this fear over money because of upbringing and things like that. And maybe shifting it more into a game or like mm -hmm. a friend or a lover might be a, might be a good one. You might be fighting <laughs> right now, but you'll get along eventually. <laughs> oh, like that's that. a good one. I like that one. Yeah, there you go. It's like, ah. It's or like, you may have to get a new one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just might have to change currencies, change yeah. oh, good. threaten it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that, oh, actually, you know what? It's about that time. You know, it, time. you have something for us that we'd really be able to help our audience to move forward with their finances. We'd be kind of hinting at it, but mm -hmm. please tell us a little bit of something that you can give our audience to help them with their business finances and budgeting. Okay, um, what I have for everyone is actually the first and 15th guide. It is literally how to manage your money in two hours or less each month. And definitely for my solo entrepreneurs that are getting into this and for the ones who are making a lot more money, um, you may have to go up to like every week and be the CFO. So what happens in the first and 15th guide is like, it literally is training you to be the CFO of your business. And what you will be able to do is ask yourself the questions of what did I do last month? What do I need to do this month? How do I close the gap? It literally is that simple. And so the guide is very simple. Um, and you're just going to like fill in the blanks. You're going to fill in the blanks and this is going to force you to put that system into your business so that you can start managing the money the way you should be managing the money. Love it. <laughs> so anyone who is on the Facebook live, I just put it into the comments. You can grab it right there. Um, and even after this, you can go back and check it out. For those of you on the recording, you'll be sent out in through the email um, message that you got today. You'll get another email with this, with the link attached. Mm -hmm. So you can get this freaking thing. I know I'm going to be getting it. <laughs> I've been following you for a long time, girl. And you I have know. amazing content. This has been an amazing uh, interview so far. <laughs> for only know, this is good. Right, it was, it's a lot. <laughs> So everybody make sure you like repeat and <laughs> right. record five, five seconds later, record five seconds later, yeah. <laughs> repeat. So I know that a lot of us, um, especially millennials, you know, our, our main audience, millennial entrepreneurs, we really like to be the Swiss army knife. I know I do. I like to have one thing that does like 20 different things, right? Almost like consolidating not only funds, but activities. <laughs> You're like, you totally get what I'm saying here. So, because, you know, like we have like, okay, we have email marketing over here. We got all of this social media marketing over mm -hmm. there. And then we got their scheduling, our CRM. And it's like, it's everywhere. It's like, we're dealing with 20 different things. What's your suggestion when you're seeing like 20, 30 different tools that people are using compared mm -hmm. to those who are using five tools that are doing the same amount of work? Are you seeing a difference in those types of budgets or are you seeing no difference? You know, it's, yeah. It's, I see a difference in when you budget your time. And it's so interesting because I go to these conferences and people are always looking for easy. Like, Felicia, how can we make it easier? And then, of course, people throw more tools at them. And the next thing you know, you're spending five hours trying to get the tools prepared when you didn't really, <laughs> when you, it, you missed the point on what you really needed to do. And I, and I've noticed this even with my business and with some other people, when you kind of get um, clear on what you're doing, who you're going after, some of the tools will go away. And then you'll also realize that some things just aren't going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That, and that's the hardest part. Some of this stuff just not going to be easy because um, I met some, I met with a client the other day and she was like, well, Felicia, I got all these dashboards. I got all these things going. Like, how can I make managing this money easy? And I told her, I said, you're at the point where you need to hire a CFO. And she was like, um, 
I have known this for a year. <laughs> I was like, well, you paid me to tell you that because <laughs> at some point you can, there is no easy about it and you're going to either have to bring in the help or either focus and really time manage your day so you can do it. But I, like you said, I mean, we are, we're the salesperson, we're the operations person, we're the marketing person. It's a lot. And when you actually start, um, I, I highly recommend when you start the first and 15th, really looking at your money, you'll be quite amazed with how much money um, you're spending on tools that you're not using and how much time you're trying to use tools that you don't know how to use. Because what happens with a lot of us is, okay, we buy something. Oh, I'm going to learn how to do it. I'm going to learn how to do it. I bet I paid for it for six months. Don't worry. I'm going to get to it. And it's like, okay, you just spent hundreds of dollars each month for something that you're not going to ever learn and that you probably could have just hired somebody to do for you. Mm. Um, so just a quick story. Um, I had a client and she's making $300,000 a year. But when she called me, she was just like, all right, Felicia, we have no money at the end of the year. We can barely pay taxes, barely getting by paying themselves at home. And, you know, of course, I, I don't know. I think I'm a budget whisperer because I already knew what the problem was <clears throat> before we even finished. Because she's like, yeah, I have a budget. And I was like, yeah, no, you don't. Um, <laughs> she has magical spreadsheets, but she actually implemented the first and 15th. And she realized that a, a good chunk of the money, she was pulling money out of the business um, happenstance just to take care of home. But she also realized that they were paying over $10,000, um, over $10,000 for software tools that they were never using inside of their business. So Ouch. I, I know. And I was like, Whoa, that's like, a, I, I saw that email. I was like, geez, that's a lot of money. She's like, yeah, we were paying for things that we weren't even using. So you, it's very impressive when you actually do start paying attention to your money, you'll start to see tools go away and then you'll start, um, you'll either find someone or you'll take on more responsibility um, inside, of, inside of your business. And um, which is so beautiful now because now her and her husband um, keep eyes on the money. And she said that was the thing. Nobody was paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a lot of work for $300,000 and barely being able to pay taxes at the end of the year. Yeah. And it can also get dangerous when you're, when you're outsourcing too. Um, you yes. know, so being careful with that, cause I have a friend and she's an extremely, um, successful realtor and mm -hmm. she alone just from referrals without her company involvement, she alone was bringing in something like 400, I think she said $400,000 gross for her to take home. But she wasn't taking, she was only taking a hundred thousand home because the rest was going to paying for her staff. And she was like, I didn't need to pay all of them for the social media marketing, all those other marketing activities. Cause it was all coming like 90% of it was coming from referrals and she wasn't tracking. Well, she tracked that, but she didn't realize that till the end of the year. I know. And so it's like, <laughs> maybe you should check that out like every quarter of the year. So like that, you know, first and 15 every month, really seeing where's your activity at and maybe exactly. letting go some people you're hiring as well that aren't serving you. <laughs> well, you know what? I think one of the things when we get into business, I, I think we kind of lose a few brain cells because everybody's promising. If you just do this thing, you'll blow up. When, when you actually start focusing and you start tracking, looking at the ROIs of everything, you'll start figuring out what actually works. And for her, if 90% of her business is coming from referrals, guess what? We need to have like a kick butt referral program all of a sudden versus putting more money into social media where you may only get 5% return. So that's the cool thing about all of this is that it does force you to look at what's working. And I have seen people who have, you know, made $130,000 in one quarter and lost all of it. And because they outsourced so much and they, they got away from what was working for them. Yeah. You know, it's like watching all of those crime shows. I'm just kind of thinking of that for some reason. It's like you know, the, the only reason they were able to get, um, you know, Capone was by looking at his taxes, right? Yeah. Like, you got to look at the money to see where the faults are at. Yes. Look at the money. <laughs> like, you know, yes. <laughs> like, like, you know, we're getting some great comments about this. I just want to share this with you, Felicia, because you've been so great. You know, we have uh, Trevor coming in with a whoop whoop. We also have uh, Christina okay. coming in with, I want her, you, Felicia, be my CFO. Thanks so much, so much for the value. And uh, we got some other people saying thank you for, you know, telling us what your bank, bank, bank was and all that jazz. <laughs> so, you were just sharing so much for us. We really appreciate you having here, Felicia. Uh, 
No problem. And I will gladly be anyone else's uh, CFO because, um, let's see, um, Elon Musk, I think like in 2015, he took like a salary of $32,000 oh, wow. and his CFO took a salary of 1.2. So yes, I will gladly <laughs> be your CFO. <laughs> and I love to travel. Yay! Uh, yeah, because you do travel a lot with your business. And I what do. I what I love about you, Felicia, is you really walk how you talk. I mean, you really watch your budgeting and you really, you do all of the stuff that you teach. Oh, you're, you're a math nerd, like you said. Um, <laughs> me, not so much, but <laughs> you're, you're very much a math nerd. Like numbers kind of scare me. Um, but for you, I mean, you just recently flew to London to do a speaking tour and you're all kind of all over the United States as well. Yeah. <laughs> kind of tell us you know, when it comes to looking at that budget and wanting to do something that is that big goal, right, is to speak internationally and do a mm -hmm. tour like you did, because you were gone for a couple months or most, right? Well, I've, I've been on the road, so I just got back from Quebec City. And see, like, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did Quebec City, and I did, I did London in March, and I'm actually going to go back to Canada in a couple of weeks, so. You're you, just going you know, back and forth. I know, just back yeah. and forth. I'll be home soon. I'll be home after July. Yay. Awesome. Well, yeah, tell us, like, if we wanted to do something like that, like a lot of us in, in my audience, as well as in Trading <laughs> University, we do do speaking. And if we have opportunity to do a tour to gain more clients, get some mm -hmm. PR, you know, get some video, all that jazz, what are your tips to be able to plan for that and budget uh -huh. it so that it is successful? <laughs> You know, the, the other side, um, and, and this is what I do on my live stream. So I talk about money, but I also talk about how to feed a budget and the way I have fed my budget over the last three years is by speaking. And like I said, I actually had to look at the return on investment of what was working because social media was not my thing. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, me getting up and talking to people. Um, <clears throat> The way the speaking came about for me was um, I actually shared a stage with Darren Hardy of Success Magazine. That's awesome. And, and he was just saying, you know, after all these interviews with all the top people in the world, the Oprah's and the Richard Branson's and the um, Warren Buffett's, and he said what he realized with them is that they only focus on three things at one time. And if they really want to master something, they focus on one. And I looked at my business and I looked at what was working for me and I realized, okay, this speaking thing is, is hands down the thing that is working for me. And it took a lot of um, internal deepness, <laughs> talking back and forth, talking with, um, talking with my husband and really figuring out, is this the best direction for the business? Because I did know that I was going to have to fund some of it just to get the ball rolling. And, um, and this is where I go back to say that business is not a right way. There's not a right way or wrong way. It's all about risk and you'll have to trust your gut. I think sometimes in business, and I know you know this, sometimes you just got to go with where your heart, heart and where your gut is telling you to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there's no book around this stuff and it just felt right at the time. And just realizing, you know, I actually, when I'm about to make something, a huge change in my life, um, I actually um, pull out the money boards. I pull out everything and we look at the finances and then we start projecting like, all right, if we take this risk, what am I going to, what, uh, what do I expect to get in the return? And I look at all of it from the marketing side of it, the money side of it. And I will say it has worked out very well. Um, and, and it is a risk. It, it was a risk when I first started doing it, but it has, oh my gosh, it has brought in more business, connecting with more people. Um, it, it's just, it's really worked. So I, I enjoy it. And if you ever want to get into the speaking game, like seriously get into it, um, I would say you probably need to decide um, how you're going to work it into your business, how fast you want to work it into your business. Because you know this as a speaker, sometimes the speaking can take over your life a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of have to have a heart to heart and it will um, have a heart to heart with yourself but it also will force you to look at your business differently because when you are on the road and you know all the time and you have a brick and mortar store that's not going to cut it with people that want to work with you so it forces you to really look at your business and how to scale it in a very very different way so it worked out well for me 
it makes you think big time. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, like, it was kind of cool. It was like every other week I was just like, and now she's in a completely different country. She's in a different, <laughs> different city. Like, what is going on? It's great and, marketing. I love it. Great marketing. <laughs> it was great marketing. I was just like, and there she is with a, you know, historical monument that's out of, out of the country. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> check, her, check her out, guys. She's on Instagram, you know, keeping up with Mrs. Jones. Uh, you know, follow her on there. She does some great stories. You can check her out, her trip to London. And I know. Canada. That was fun. Her upcoming trip to Quebec which yeah. is awesome a good time of the year to go too so that's you know I just got back from Quebec it was freezing cold so I'm going to um um Calgary and Edmonton the oh. next time. I'm hoping it's warm I am manifesting warm places to speak now I have <laughs> off. I'm done freezing we're gonna go <laughs> below the equator <laughs> I know, that's where I'm going now but you know what but here's the thing you know it's all about fun and that's where I kind of lead with business we didn't get into business to be stressed out so add as much fun as you can that's what's going to keep you in this game longer oh, absolutely we got some new comments here we got um yeah. Donnie coming in saying love it anyone need to carry your bags sure. <laughs> <laughs> Right? If, she, if she's your CFO, I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, Cassie comes in. She says, "You're incredible." So thank no, you thank so you. much for all the value you're giving here. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this over on you into your court a little bit. Is mm -hmm. there anything that we have not talked about that you feel, you know, sole entrepreneurs, founders of these startups are really needing to hear from you, or tips or processes that they would want to take away to really improve and scale their business mm -hmm. success? You know what? Um, I'm going to get a little woo for a moment. <laughs> Yay! got to get a little wooey because you're like, okay, here's the math nerd. Why are we getting woo? Uh, <laughs> I love the balance of that though. That's great. You know, I mean, all of the systems, everything we talked about for everybody watching, um, if you have to go replay, please replay. Um, reach, out to, um, reach out to Anastasia if you have questions. But all of the tips around the money, they're there. They're basic tips. It really is just start acknowledging Put the first and 15th in the place. You'll be surprised at what will happen with your money. But on the other side of things, um, that balance of everything is you, you got to start trusting your gut. Go with what makes you happy. I know it sounds really corny, but I've learned this thing of when you are operating um, where you're comfortable what makes you happy, the business will come and you will soar and it won't feel like you're working so hard all the time. And that's what I have learned in business to just kind of um, start being yourself a little bit and start inserting yourself into your business. That's the one beautiful thing about you is that you, I see all of your photos with unicorns and all an assortment of things on your head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And that's the thing. And you, you're supposed to be able to still show up and laugh and still have fun and not be stressed out because we know, I know you've seen business owners that are just so stressed out. And you ask them like, why are you even doing this? Mm. So just remember to balance yourself, get a hobby. Don't talk about business all the time. Talk about it um, when you need to, but kind of make sure that you still have a life. You're still a person. You are not your business. You definitely remember that you are not your business and just go have fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, there's this, uh, I heard it from somebody and I kind of interpreted it in a different way. So how I interpreted it was that no one wants to do business with people who are not having fun. No. And so it's like, that's why I love you so much, Felicia. It's like, you're always having fun. You're up there, you're smiling on stage at networking. I mean, we bump into each other quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, and it's like, you're always having fun no matter what you're doing and you love math. And so this is a wonderful industry for you. We, I like math. Um, I saw Black Panther like twice. So I'm like secretly Princess Shuri. Ooh. I just need a country and a lab. That's awesome. <laughs> That's all I need now. And some awesome, you know, tech and Kung Fu moves, right? Yeah. You, you know, I, 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 I do secretly like comic books. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in your in your bio you sent me, you did say that you do collect things and uh, mm. you're kind of a nerd in that space. So tell us a little bit about that. Let's get fun so, here. Okay. Um, you know, I've done this thing where I don't even talk about myself as much in, the, in speaking gigs now because I tell people, if you never want to talk to me about money, that's cool. Um, here are five things that I, um, that I think are cool. I like sparkly jewelry and cute shoes. Um, I, w I used to be a professional cheerleader a long time ago. And um, I, I was in a circus for a summer because how I paid for college was through baton twirling. So I, am a, I still call myself a baton twirler for life. 
and I'm at 100 <laughs> hours into being a yacht captain. That is so freaking awesome. Like, I'm just like, what? You literally ran away. Well, not ran away, but you were with the circus. Like, I, I joined a circus and it's so weird because um, um, my job coming out of, um, I worked for the U.S. Navy as a computer scientist and a systems engineer. So um, the circus and the professional cheerleading was like my, my nighttime hustle. And my dad told me, he said, you do realize that's not normal. I was like, really? Not everybody's a cheerleader. He's like, no, that's not normal for computer science. It's like, okay. That's, so. that's very true. You're quite a, <laughs> you're quite a conundrum for sure. <laughs> I, I realize I'm just a weirdo. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Cause people yeah. love to work with you cause you're excited about what you do <laughs> and you love it and you bring, you know, your, your yeah. clownness to, I know. I can bring the batons and that's what we can do. <laughs> Or we're going to go yachting. So that's the other thing. I, I hey, think yachting is crazy. <laughs> you know what, guys? Listen to Felicia. She can help you budget so you can have your yacht. <laughs> I know. I know. It's going to be so much fun. That yeah. is so cool. Well, thank you so much for, for being part of this cast, Felicia. I know. We're getting so many more comments. We're getting Cassie <laughs> coming in here again. She's like, please don't take this down. I got here late. Like, <laughs> like people are really getting a lot of value here. Don't oh, worry, cool. Cassie. This will be recorded and it'll also be on the Facebook Live. <laughs> no worries. And if Felicia is here for you, she's all over social media, specifically Instagram. That, that seems to be like your hangout, right? I, I, you know, I like, I like the Instagram because I, I picked up a hobby of, um, I picked up my camera and cause I needed something else to balance out the work. So I'm learning how to be a little photographer and Instagram just is a way to show pretty pictures. I like pretty pictures and I like watching pretty pictures. So, um, that's, that's just been fun for me over there, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty open. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, um, I even give out my cell phone number. So I'll give it, I'll give it to Anastasia. So you could text me. I'm like, seriously, if you got a question, um, I answer all questions on my live stream every morning. So yeah, I'm here to help anyone who needs help. Cause I, I totally understand what it's like <laughs> to not know what's going on with money. <laughs> Absolutely. And we got some good stuff on here. We got Donnie saying hired. We got Cassie saying, thank you. <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation <laughs> point. So thank you so much. Felicia. We really, I really had a great time having you here. I think we're going to have to have you on the show again. Guys, if you agree with me, put some likes, put some hearts. Let me know if you're really enjoying Felicia so much that you want her to be here. Oh, quick question. Um, and I will also put this into the live, Cassie, but she just asked, what is your handle? For your um, at, at keep up with Mrs. Jones. At keep up with Mrs. MRS. Yes. Jones. Um, yeah. You can also go, uh, you know, can Google her too. You can Google that on Instagram and it'll pop up on there for you. Kat. Yeah, I, I realized that all of my speaking stuff, I'm, I'm very Googleable. Is that a word? It, well, your name also is really unique. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm pretty Googleable. If you Google I'm Felicia Googleable, Googleable. or um, <laughs> budgetologist, I kind of show up. That's kind of neat for someone who doesn't know anything about social media or SEO. <laughs> I think we just created a new word that's going to go viral. Googleable. <laughs> Googleable. <I am> Googleable. <laughs> awesome. And yes, uh, Cassie says, "Give me your number." So we'll also put her number into the live for you guys. Man, you're just like super uber fabulous. This is awesome. I know. Oh, I can give it to you. Want me to give it to you now? I can give it yeah, to you. Yeah, everybody listen in. I'll type <laughs> it into the comments. All right. The only rule about texting me is you got to tell me who you are so that you don't get a who this because I will <laughs> do that. I'm like, who are you? Uh, so my number is 303-327-9158. And that is 303-327-9158. And seriously, um, any questions you have, just send them to me. Um, and if it gets really deep, I'll answer, answer them on my live stream. So there you go. I think I typed it in wrong, actually. <laughs> so you said 303-327-9158. Yeah, I totally typed it in wrong. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, guys. The second number in there, ending in eight, <laughs> is her number. Cassie says she's ready. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Prepare to be bombarded with text, Felicia. Again, oh, thank you that's so cool. much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, this uh, concludes our Intranial Talks tonight. We will probably have Felicia on the show again since this has been Yay. so popular and so amazing. She is and a wonderful person. <laughs> check her out on Instagram. Check her out on Facebook. Uh, keeping up with Mrs. Jones, and she is the budgetologist. She Yay. helps you make sure that you make money and not lose money. 
So thank you so much, everyone. This is Intrennial Talks. I am your host, Anastasia Button of Intrennial University. We'll talk to you all again in about one week. I believe that's where we're at. So thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.